Hey everybody, this is Tyler Tapper. So happy to be with you guys here today. So last spring in March, I was lucky enough to be able to take a trip to Hawaii. Every time I go off someplace and go traveling, I always try and find something that I can bring back and make into something when I get home. I always enjoy having something I can look back on that's not just something made in a different country and brought back to a souvenir shop. Walking in and out of our condo, we always walked under this tree and they had just these really cool, huge seed pods that were always falling down. So I decided to grab one of those and see what I could do with it later. As you could probably see by the title, I decided to make a knife handle out of this stuff. I got a bunch of knife blanks off of eBay. This is one of them. I was looking for one that was about the right shape to um, use most of, the, most of the seed pod here. After I got them all split apart, I took all the seeds out. I wasn't sure if I was going to put the seeds in or not, but I knew I was going to fill it up with epoxy. Uh, first thing I did was I just cut it down to the right size, so, yeah, so it was a little bit easier to deal with. One thing I've started doing is tracing the outline of the handles on some tape. And this is just to make it a little bit easier to place, uh, that way I don't have to keep using the knife blank. Trace that out, put it on another piece of tape so it wasn't going to stick to anything and be a little bit more stable, and then I cut it out with a pair of scissors. And when I was going back and forth with where I was going to place and what material I was going to use, it really was helpful just having all the blanks right there. I decided not to put the seed pods back in here. I thought that it would be a little bit cooler if it was clear and you could really see the depth of it. So here I'm mixing up some two-part epoxy and filling these up. I end up doing a couple of different layers of this. Uh, I would put one down, sand it, and then put another one on top of it just so I could make sure it was filled up all the way. For the back, after I started sanding it flat, I realized there was too much of a curve in the seed pods. So I also had to epoxy over the back, and this was just to build it up to level. And I think I had to do one layer of epoxy, sand it, and then do one more to make it flat. When I had those built up enough where I could flatten them down on the belt sander, I came in and I roughed out the shape uh, just to get it kind of close, and then went back in and traced over exactly where I wanted it and used the scroll saw to cut everything out. You can see where I traced the hole in there that went through the knife. I picked two points on the knife where there was a kind of change in the curve and connected those. I was going to make the handle just go yeah, halfway through the open hole in the blade there. After I got those marked out, I just cut them and then off camera, I sanded a little bit of a bevel into there so they would smoothly go down into the metal after they were glued on. It's always important to make sure everything's really clean, so I went over it with uh, paint thinner. I also went, and you can see I took that on the belt sander with some heavy grit, um, just to give it a little bit of tooth and make it stick a little bit better. I'm going over the pins here. I know you'd be able to see them through the epoxy, so I just wanted to make sure that they were sanded down really well. Um, threw them in the drill, chucked them up, and then put a piece of sandpaper over there. I'm doing these a little bit differently. I don't usually uh, do both sides at one time. I just decided to try something a little bit different this time because everybody kept saying it was faster. Uh, it worked out pretty well. The only downside I noticed to this, and I think it wouldn't be an issue on most knives, but the scales were small enough where when I clamped down in between, um, it kind of interfered with the angle of the drill a little bit, so I drilled one of the holes a little bit off, not quite at 90 degrees, so just something to keep in mind. A lot of times I'll just blast these uh, pins off with the belt sander. I did a, used a hacksaw because I hadn't given the epoxy that much time to cure, so I didn't want to put too much heat into it and risk moving them around. After those were trimmed down, I came back and I got the majority of the material removed to get it in line with the edge of the tang under there. You can see where I beveled the edges of the scales here just so they smooth down into the knife. To get that hole uh, drilled out there, I first went in with a file, and then these are just some um, 
I've used them for headboarding work in the past, but they're just sandpaper rolls. Uh, moved a lot of material real quick, and they were just small enough to fit in there where I needed them. Going back in with the file to do some fine tuning on there. Power tools are great, but they remove a lot of stock really fast, so I like to move the majority with them and then come back with the hand tools just to do the final part. Also, this radius was small enough where I had to go in with a file. The belt sander was, was too large to get in there. After that was where I wanted it, I came back in and started doing the profile with the file. Started with that and then moved up through the grits on sandpaper to get it nice and smooth. This knife probably isn't going to be used that much. If it was, I, pr I would have used a more of a flat finish on there. Um, as it was, I really wanted to show it off and I wanted to, you to really be able to see all the details. So I used a two-part automotive uh, top coat, just like you'd paint a car with. The nice part about using that instead of the clear coat that comes out of a spray can is, I mean, it's like an epoxy. Those two parts harden really hard, really fast, and you can get a really deep, uh, shiny coat on there. Now, conversely, the bad part of it is obviously you need a lot more machinery, you need an air compressor and a gun, and you have to clean out the gun. So I always try and batch it out and see I have three knives that I'm clear coating at the same time here with it. I went through and I did about five or six coats on here, let it flash about 10 minutes in between each coat. Uh, seemed to work out really well. After 24 hours, I got it was all cured and I got to take it out in the sun. Uh, the effect worked exactly how I wanted it to. You could see really deep into that epoxy and see all the little details of the inside of the seed pod. Really appreciate you guys taking some time out of your day to watch my video. Uh, I'd love if you'd leave a like for me. If you'd like to see more videos like this, hit that subscribe button. And I will be back soon with more videos. Thank you.